Geeky Abode. This is my channel where I share everything homeschool, life, and family adventures. In this video, I'll be sharing our curriculum choices for social study, history, and culture studies for the 2022-2023 school year. I'm a homeschooling mom to two kiddos. We've been homeschooling now for the past six years. One of my children is entering the fourth grade and the other is going into the second grade. We choose mostly secular curriculum with an eclectic style. So let's dig into our options that I've chosen this year. I'm really excited. I may have chosen more than we can handle, but I'm gonna try to figure out a way to fit it all in. The first thing that I wanted to include in our curriculum this year was the start of US history. U.S. history is extremely difficult, especially for young children and my children in particular. My children are definitely on the sensitive side. And when you're talking about U.S. history, there are a lot of dark and kind of hard topics that make it difficult to approach with younger children. I looked around and I ended up stumbling across... A River of Voices. In A River of Voices by Blossom and Root got me extremely excited to start teaching U.S. history to my children. And there's a few reasons why I was really excited about A River of Voices. The first reason was U.S. history could also come from a voice of, I don't know how to say it, but more of Maybe it, the way to say it is that it comes from only one perspective of history. And when you look at history, there are always different people involved and different perspectives that are involved. And it's not always from one voice or one side of history. A River of Voices, and that's where the name came from, it tells the stories of everybody during that time in history, not just one side of history. So that's one way that I was super excited about starting A River of Voices. Another reason that I was extremely interested in A River of Voices is that it has three different streamlines or approaches to the curriculum. There is, I believe, a black, uh, sorry, relaxed approach, a regular standard approach and the advanced approach. So it can be used for a variety of different ages and different levels of where you are in your studies of histories and what you can really absorb and handle during that time. So we are going to choose the relaxed approach when it comes to learning US history this year. And we're going to go extremely gentle when it comes to history this year. But I plan on building on that in the future. So at this point in time, my kids are extremely sensitive to some really tough topics, and I want to be extremely gentle with that. But I plan on building on that in the future. So at this point in time, my kids are extremely sensitive to some really tough topics, and I want to be extremely gentle with that. But I plan on going through, if this works well, this is volume one, and Blossom and Root will be releasing, I believe, two more volumes to bring us up to modern times. If this works well for us, I plan on starting with the volume one, going with the easy, relaxed, gentle approach for the first year, for the first you know, cycle through volume ones, two and three. And then after that, cycle back through and either go with the standard approach or go with the more advanced approach at that point in time, depending on my kids' level, their knowledge, and what they're able to handle. The third reason why River of Voices was exciting to me is it is more of a choose-your-own-adventure style curriculum. Blossom and Root really shines when it comes to that sort of curriculum. For me, it might be hard because I want to check off all the boxes, but I have to keep in mind that I don't need to do it all. 
And with Blossom and Root, you don't need to do it all. You can either select a few of the different items in order to get a concept across, or you can do a few items and then you can add more to it. If you are a book basket family, there's a list of books that you can read. If you are more of a table learner, there's stuff that you can do at your table. If you are a visual learner, there's options provided in there for the visual learners. So it's definitely a choose your own adventure approach to learning history and I'm extremely excited to try it this year and I will keep you posted on how it goes. Now after US history, there was a, I didn't want to ignore world history or the world or world cultures. So I looked for something that in, included more of a geography, cultural education when it came to a full curriculum for the year as a way to add in a little bit of, you know, geography and culture. I came across Torchlight which is completely secular curriculum. These are all secular curriculums. It's a literature-based curriculum. And I selected Worldly Wisdom, which I believe it is, it's a level K. Even though my children are going into second grade and fourth grade, I selected this level K program because it covers the world and different cultures. And that's mainly what I'm using it for Torchlight is a full curriculum that covers, I believe, almost everything besides math and um, reading instruction. It does include science, but we are using it basically mainly for the study of geography and world cultures. And then we will include a little bit of the science in there as we can because it does look very fun and enjoyable because it is connected to the different countries that you're studying at this time at that time so i'm excited about torchlight torchlight's a lot i'm going into it knowing that i'm not doing the whole thing because i have all these other things that i'm doing so i will have to schedule it out a little bit better and i probably give myself a little bit of work but it is just i want a variety this year i want us to have a little bit of sampling of this and that and i want to find a way to do it so i'll keep you posted on how river of voices and how torchlight worldly wisdom go for us another thing i wanted to mention because it's something i've actually had for years and it is something i'm going to dig into and add to our reading and curriculum this year is give your child the world this is a great book because it lists out different countries of the world and has names and descriptions of books that go along with that country. So as we're going through Torchlight, I will reference that to see if there's any other books that I want to add into our country study. I almost forgot to mention that we have been using letters from afar this previous year. You receive a letter each month in the mail and they're beautifully illustrated and is a story about the character Isabel, who's been traveling to that country, will continue to be using letters from afar, and I'm look interested in finding out different ways that I can incorporate studying those letters or using those letters as a jumping point, possibly getting some more books from the library or cook a recipe that goes along with it, just a way to better remember that country and learn a little bit more about each country every month. So letters of afar, letters from afar, are going to stay in our geography and history curriculums. So those are my choices for the 2022-2023 school year for our social studies, history, and culture curriculums. Let me know, do you think I bit off more than I can chew? Let me know down below if you've tried any of these curriculums and I'm sure to keep you posted. Please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you won't miss out on any videos that I'll be posting. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.